Hey guys, thanks for watching. So, I'm back to do some more upgrades on my Yeti XL here. This time, I need to replace these stock rims that come with the kit with something a little bit stronger. Now the trick is removing the tires from the rims without damaging them because these are really good tires that come with the kit and I want to reuse them. I know some people use acetone, some people boil them off. Myself, personally, I prefer the baking method. I think it's a lot cleaner and safer and it just works a lot better. I can't stand dealing with acetone, it's just nasty stuff. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Now the same thing will apply if you have the ready to run version of the Yeti XL or if you have any RC and you're interested in removing the tires from the rims. Maybe you've got a cracked rim or maybe like me you've got one that's rounded out here. Um, you can do the same thing. So the reason for this upgrade is that the stock wheels that come with the Yeti XL kit, uh, the Raceline wheels, they're called, is they're just a little soft and I've had a problem rounding them out. Now, I went on to the rccrawlers.com forums and uh, checked on this. A lot of people are having the same problem, so it's not just me. There seems to be some sort of defect in Axial's design because it's not only that the wheels are too soft. That's part of the problem. Axial uses some very soft plastics. But the other problem is that the wheel nuts are coming loose. And what some people are doing to correct it is they're using, instead of this 17 millimeter wrench that comes with the kit, use a real wrench and just muscle that sucker down. That'll help keep it on there. And another thing that people are doing is they're doubling up the, the wheel nuts like this. And that seems to help quite a bit also. These are just um, nuts that came from a, an RC8, but they're all 17 millimeter, so they're compatible. Um, another thing people are doing is throwing on a drop of uh, thread lock on there. And so all that seems to help uh, prevent these wheel nuts from coming loose, which in turn prevents the hex on the inside from, from rounding them out. So if you're watching this and you haven't stripped out your stock wheels yet, you know, take that advice. It's, they're not my ideas. These came from rccrawler.com. Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't get that information until I'd already run my Yeti XL and I've stripped out some of the wheels. So quick, easy, cheap solution, some team associated bead locks uh, for their rival monster truck. They're supposed to be a direct fit, so I'll see how that works out. One thing I will point out, it says bead lock. I don't know if you can read that. Everywhere you see the description for these, it says bead lock. They're actually not. They're fake locks. I've got one out of package here to show you. <laughs> these are plastic. That was a surprise for me. I thought they were actual bead locks because the description says bead lock. <laughs> the product says bead lock on it. They're not. You need to glue them. So anyway, they're something like $10 on tower. Maybe a little more like $11.50, but I think after my coupon, I think I spent no more than 20 bucks for, for both of them. So won't put you back too far. I've also seen people using Thunder Tiger MT4 wheels, and I know people are using the Proline F11s and Desperados uh, as well, but those require a little bit of modification. And I know RC four-wheel drive also makes some plastic uh, Dick CPEC bead locks, which look awesome. I don't know if you've seen these, but they look super nice. Um, the problem with those is rotating mass. From what I've read, um, they increase the weight of the wheels quite a bit. I mean, these are really lightweight. The stock ones are really lightweight. Those RC four-wheel drive bead locks are fairly heavy. I forgot the exact grams, but they would add a lot of rotating mass. And the same goes for some of the aftermarket tires I've seen. I know RC four-wheel drive makes some mud slingers that I'd love to put on here because they look just awesome. But what I've read is that you start increasing this rotating mass and you're just asking for broken parts because the drive lane, drive train, excuse me, is already pretty strained as it is. I'll show you something here. I've got an unnatural spin to my front wheel there. So I uh, had a problem with the dog bone in my third pack out, I think. I'll add this to the list of uh, parts I've broken on just a handful of packs. Uh, the pin and the dog bone kind of slipped out of place, so I might be able to put that back into place But I'll probably just replace it because if it's happened once it'll happen again I'm just using this as an example That uh, you start increasing the rotating mass of these wheels and you're just asking for broken parts I mean, I don't know if rotating mass had anything to do with this dog bone breaking, but I'd say it's a fair 
fair bet you'll start breaking things in the drivetrain if you increase the weight there. So anyway, because of that, my setup will be the team associated um, fake locks and um, the stock tires, at least for now. And so that's what I'll be running. Now let's get to the next point. We're gonna bake these, uh, these tires off the wheels. All right, you guys, so I'm ready to start baking. Now, I've got my tires wrapped up in aluminum foil here. You don't have to do that, but I figure it'll protect the rubber, it'll protect the plastic a little bit, so why not? I'm gonna bake mine at 325 for about 20 minutes on each side. I've found that's about right because too high a temperature and you'll warp that rim. Too low a temperature and you won't unbond the glue from between the tire and the rim and you can rip the tire peeling it off the rim later. So about 325 is what I think is about right. Another piece of advice with this sort of baking that we're doing, you might want to make sure the ladies are out of the house. Um, you got a wife, you got a girlfriend, you got a mom, whatever your situation is, this is really going to stink up the kitchen. So, you know, just a word of warning on that. My wife's out of the house, so time to go get bacon. Let's go. Okay, so I've got my tires out of the oven. They've been in there for 40 minutes at about 325. Got my work gloves on here because they're nice and nice and hot. Let's see how this worked out. I'll mention that the no problems with the smell. They didn't smell bad at all. Now I smell a little bit. I open up the foil. But since I had them wrapped up real tightly in foil, there was no problems with bad smells in the kitchen. So the wife would have been happy if she had been home. And they're breaking loose there, no problem. I might have gone slightly higher temperature for slightly longer time because they're they're still holding onto the rim there, but I'm gently peeling them off the rim and they are coming loose. This is the part where it's a real light touch. I've destroyed tires in the past on my buggy baking them off because I didn't have the temperature high enough, the glue didn't come unbonded as well as I would have liked, and I lost part of the bead of the tire stuck to the rim, and that made that particular tire unusable, so it defeated the purpose of the whole operation there. So, something to be aware of. Do not pull the bead too hard, you'll break the tire. If it doesn't come loose with a gentle touch, put it back in the oven for more time, possibly at a higher temperature. But don't force it, you'll break the tire. But that, that seems to work out. Let's see if you can see that. It's a little messy. I'm not worried about these rims because I have no plans to reuse them. But the bead on the tire, you can see that, is completely undamaged. A little dirty, I'll have to clean it. I might clean that with a little acetone, but completely usable, absolutely undamaged. So I'll be able to glue those onto my associated rims I have behind me. So that worked pretty well. All right, you guys, I've got my new wheels glued up to the tires. And one thing I noticed is I unglued all five tires. I didn't need to do that because I've only got four new wheels, but anyway, I did that without thinking. But this way, I've got a sh one extra to, to show you what I did. I had to clean the beadlock ring right here because there was quite a bit of leftover glue. It was uh, pretty dirty. So I used a little acetone and I actually ended up sanding it. I got some nice coarse sandpaper and sanded that off to make a nice clean surface for the, for the re-gluing. So uh, that was uh, something that was necessary. And another thing that I did is I wrapped um, some duct tape on the inside. The reason why I do this is these tires have such huge sidewalls here and the vehicle is going to go at pretty high speeds that they just turn into pancakes, even on 4S. I don't run this vehicle on 6S because I've got plenty of breakage on 4S. But even on, even on 4S, they just, um, you know, they really balloon out quite a bit. And I think a few rounds of duct tape will help that a little bit. Now, I've heard of a lot of guys using Gorilla Tape. So if you can get Gorilla Tape, that's actually better. I can't get it where I live in Ecuador, but duct tape seems to do the trick. So that's what I did there, put that back. 
And this is my setup. You know, I'm, I can't say I'm completely excited about these fake beadlocks here. I don't really like them. I think they look cheesy. I thought they were real beadlocks when I was buying them. I would really love to have some, some real beadlock wheels for this vehicle, but the only ones I know of are the RC four-wheel drive Dick CPEC beadlocks. And those ones look awesome, but like I mentioned before, they're just uh, they're real heavy. I'm not sure if the drivetrain can handle it. One thing I did on the other side is I left off the, the cheesy little beadlock rings here because they're not functional. So I kind of like the look of that without the cheesy blue fake beadlock. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. You know, drop me a comment down there and let me know what you think. Is it better this side without the fake beadlocks? Or is it better with the fake beadlocks? Since they're not really scale, I think I might run it without them. Anyway, if you're looking for some new wheels for your Yeti XL, these team associated wheels will work pretty well. They're pretty cheap. If you're still running your Yeti XL on the stock wheels, be sure to double up those wheel nuts, tighten them down real well, and maybe even use a drop of thread lock. You'll get a little bit more use out of them. But if you're like me and you've already you know, rounded them out, then these, these aren't a bad option. Um, that's it, you guys, for this uh, wheel upgrade. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, feel free to uh, subscribe if you haven't already and hit that like button. It really helps me out. All right, you guys, until next time.